morning y'all it is uh, Saturday morning uh, what do you say let's build a uh, let's build a wheelchair ramp frame today I've already been to the uh, lumber yard it looks like the weather is trying to clear it is windy as hell and I think they say that uh, March comes in like a line and goes out like a uh, lamb <laughs> whatever but uh, the object today is we're going to uh, build a frame for a platform up here and that platform is going to come right back to uh, to here to this point. Uh, that's where our uh, our angle will start to turn down for the uh, ramp. So what you want to do is build a well supported uh, a well supported uh, platform up here, and then tomorrow we're going to get some decking and cover it. So we're going to need uh, we're going to need a base supports down each side. We're going to need to uh, get a uh, ledger board put in under that under that uh, area right there to be fit on there so we can screw into that and uh, get her underway here today. I have been out, I did get the supplies I needed, live bolts, carriage bolts, all that. And you see over here I have a, a pile of pressure treated lumber. I was going to use 2 by 8 but that's kind of overkill. I got 2 by 6 by 12 foot stringers and that'll be good for the uh, for the runs down the uh, side on the wall masonry wall side and over here and then I got uh, some other uh, 4x4 posts to do a post corner there so we'll all be uh, it'll all be good so I got joist hangers two angled joist hangers so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and build the frame okay the first thing I had to do this morning was get something to hook on to for the uh, door side of the platform and I took a pressure treated 2x4 here and I cut that to uh, 50 and a half inches and I uh, knocked that under there you can see it's a perfect uh, fit now when I go to put the decking on top you know it'll be uh, one inch above and it'll still give plenty of uh, plenty of swing for the door it'll also give plenty of swing to mount a uh, transition between the uh, last piece of decking and the uh, and the uh, threshold here which is exactly what I want so I want to secure this on here now and um, take it from there the next thing I want to do I have uh, one of the two by six stringers here I want to uh, put that stringer here and I want to I want to notch out for that so that it'll slide over top of this here and that'll be my uh, my decking will ride over top of that and take it to just below the uh, threshold there when I put the uh, when I put the last piece on and I can always infill with some extra support at the end but I don't think I'll need it with center stringers here and all that so I'm gonna notch that out I'm gonna take a little more of this uh, trim molding out of the corner and then uh, get that cut so what I did now, I measured that uh, this board is an inch and a quarter higher than it uh, than it should be, resting up on the uh, up on the uh, short little uh, landing right here, the concrete landing. So I just set my dividers. It's called scribing. I set my dividers at uh, one and a quarter inches, and I just laid it on the ground and made a mark on the uh, on the uh, pressure treated here and the end mark and I'm now going to notch that out and that'll come down to a, uh, a perfect height so our decking sits on top and it won't be above the threshold here. I probably have to notch this, of course I'll have to notch this out a little bit more to bring that down an inch and a quarter too but that's an easy uh, after we get it off. I just have it, uh, I just have it level here while I did. just have a little uh, nail holding it in there while I do the uh, Adjustment and of course I made sure that that was uh, that was perfectly level before I did the uh, Before I did the cut you can see by scribing that you get a really really custom fit against the um, against the uh, cement landing here and uh, All the weight will be borne on here. You won't be putting any weight really on the um, decking material uh, you know just a little bit out to this uh, this point but it's going to be supported by a four by four foot post I'd like to work with a uh, speed square because it makes it so much faster to uh, get lines extended down a piece of lumber it also has uh, angle settings and all that so I you know I'm used to using that I've got a uh, you know I've got that board set 
perfectly level and that's what I need there. Now, you, you got to understand that when they talk about lumber sizes, dimensionally it's not what it's stated. In other words, a 4x4 four four post which is going to sit here and support the, uh, support the weight here is not 4x4, four four, it's 3.5 inches in actual fact. And uh, you got to really understand that when you do your measurements. So we want the post here, and then we want to uh, <clears throat> we want to be able to screw another uh, facing board, the uh, two by six here, to the front of it, coming across here. So we'll be bolting in uh, two sides of our uh, post for real good uh, for real good strength, and then we'll be uh, using some lag bolts bolts to sort of steady that there. So. The good news is we'll be doing our uh, cut right here, so that'll make our finished uh, our uh, <coughs> our front piece of the uh, support board here coming across the facing board. We'll hang our joist hangers off of to um, you know to give support to the uh, ramp part going down here. Uh, it'll be a good fit, and the uh, ramp will start exactly where it's supposed to. Not here, not here, back here. But exactly where it's supposed to. So we're going to do our uh, do our cut right here. Now theoretically, this fit should be as good for uh, the three stringers all together. Here, I can use this as a model to do the three because I did my layout carefully, and uh, everything is true and level here. So I should be able to cut out three of these: one for a center stringer and one for a left stringer saving me a lot of time and I'll do a little experimentation to make sure that uh, that's going to fit okay because uh, you know I don't want to redrill masonry anchors and all that I want to get it uh, set once and done so I'm going to get on and do some testing making good progress I ended up trimming that uh, little overlap down there because it gave a uh, when I set that in yesterday I'm I uh, must have mismeasured slightly and thought one side was uh, up a little more favoring the other. But uh, I have everything all set for the uh, two, uh, two side stringers here. The one thing I want to always make sure I do is check, double check. So I cut what's called a uh, storyboard here. 15 and a half inches, that's what a tread's going to be. And I wanted to uh, take little nibbles off of this to really get a super custom fit underneath of that uh, stringer against the house, which I did. And now you can see that uh, we're sitting perfectly level. And I want to make sure I uh, come out to the end here. There's no sense setting anything permanently if it's just going to have to be uh, ripped out because of a uh, screw up later. So you can see down at the end, we're looking, uh, we're also looking good there. And uh, believe me, by the time I set these, this thing will be uh, absolutely perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure the uh, third stringer is cut and good to go. So far so good. We're about an hour into the project. We have our uh, basically our level sets on our uh, platform here. So what I want to do now is because I moved this board uh, forward a bit, I need to uh, shave off a little bit of the uh, end here. See where that mark is it'll because it'll overhang too much with the uh, four by four I need to have all of these the same length when I set the when I set the uh, four by four post down there and then run the uh, stringer across the uh, front because when we run the stringer across the front that's be hanging our joist hangers for the uh, for the ramp part so I'm going to go ahead and cut that everything is very level and true and that's exactly what I want. And when I put the uh, treads on top, they're going to come up uh, three quarters to an inch. And then I'll be able to uh, just put a nice transition strip right there. It won't be a lot to, uh, won't be a lot to negotiate up there when the, uh, when the treads are all set and everything. And it'll be, uh, it'll be all good. Good news that uh, that's all cut to size now. So we're even across the uh, back end where the uh, down sloping ramp will begin. Look, uh, there's an old saying in the, at least when I uh, used to do uh, <coughs> construction and stuff, Jesus saves, but levels save me. Okay, that means what you want to do is uh, check everything off and with the level. Make sure everything is plumb and straight and level. You know, you don't want anybody to ever come and have a situation where they check and, oh, it's pitched to one side and, uh, you know, no good, no good. 
you want to make sure it's done absolutely perfectly, especially if it's your family or somebody you love that's going to be using it every day. You really have to make sure that it's, uh, that it's really solid as a rock. So having said that, I'm now going to go ahead and I want to dry fit the, uh, the post, the uh, 4x4 post. We're going to have one over there. We're going to have one over here and we're going to have, uh, we uh, are going to have maybe two sort of a caddy corner to each other. I'm not um, quite sure yet for a little extra support on that uh, center post. So when I say uh, dry fitting, I'm sort of going <coughs> to cut a piece almost to length here and then come over here and uh, sort of fit it in there. It's a three and a half inch cut and my uh, radial saw won't make that so I'll have to cut around four sides of it and then uh, finish it off with a uh, hand saw. So I really want to try to do it uh, one time. Okay, so the uh, piers have been cut to size here and now all we have to do is secure the uh, footings here for them because if we ever had to have an inspection or something we want to make damn sure we pass. So we have to drill deep enough down to uh, set these concrete anchors and this is going to take a while because uh, this stuff is really hard even though I have a masonry bit so just got to be patient there's nothing else that can be done about it. Okay those holes are drilled and everything's all set. Now I want to drill some holes in the back of the board that's going to be against the house. The uh, stringer here, the rafter if you will. And I want to make sure that the heads on the carriage bolts are countersunk. I don't want them sticking out, uh, you know, and displacing the board from the side of the house. I want the board to sit flush. So I uh, pre-drilled pre a little uh, countersink here. Now I'll go ahead and drill the two 3 8 inch holes. And then uh, we'll drill through the uh, 4 by 4 post and we'll be ready to uh, secure this footing on this side. We're moving light along. At this point it looks like a slow progress, but getting this platform correct and getting it safe is absolutely critical. Now I'm ready to secure. This side has already been secured. It's really uh, on good. Now I'm going to secure uh, this side. And few people know they sell such a thing as uh, masonry uh, screws, which is exactly masonry nut. Um, listen to me, it's been a long day. Masonry, where in the hell are they? Here they are. Fluted masonry nails. And uh, these things work great for uh, driving into concrete and brick without uh, doing a lot of cracking and stuff. And they're uh, fantastic. I used a lot of them when I did the concrete work out on the uh, back deck. So I'm going to use these now to secure the uh, left side of the ramp. And you see my level in play once again. And I actually stuck a little uh, piece of shim down under there. And now I'm going to stick my uh, truth board on and make sure from side to side she's perfectly level. Well, it's getting on about uh, 2 o'clock. We've been at it since about 9. You might think, whoa, that's not a hell of a lot to show for that. But the uh, setting the platform in front of the door is probably the most critical part of the ramp because so much of the weight is going to be sitting in, on these joist hangers off the front of this uh, off the front of this uh, edge here, the 2x6. So uh, in point of fact, that had to be perfect. The thing is perfectly square, perfectly level all the way around. It's suitable for redwood decking on top. Now you can see I've also secured with carriage bolts there on both sides. And I took a uh, joist hanger and put it in there besides the uh, nails. So that thing is not gone anywhere. The next thing we want to address now is, uh, you know, doing our measurements and doing the takeoff for the uh, stringers for the ramp. And uh, I have 12 foot ones, so we'll we'll see what's going to be done with them. I'm going to shoot a couple measurements, and uh, I'll let you know. There's a lot of ways to mess up a ramp, and probably one of the worst ones is failure to understand how to uh, cut the angle that's going to slope down and allow a wheelchair to get onto the end. Uh, you know, we're using uh, two by six by uh, 12 foot stringers here. And obviously they have to be uh, tapered at this end and they need to come up to, uh, they need to come up to uh, meet here. 
and I have a couple of my uh, truth board story boards here to make sure I get a good smooth joint when I go to put the uh, decking down tomorrow you'll see here I have a uh, angled uh, hanger that I'm going to secure on here and I'm also uh, going to put a little bit of underneath the uh, bracing too and uh, the way I do that, the way I get that slope is I put the uh, I put a piece of uh, the uh, two by six here, and at the exact point where it's uh, even here, I make a mark here, and then I uh, I actually run the uh, run the uh, run a line from here all the way down to where I want my taper to end, like a half an inch. I uh, snap that line or draw that line and then I cut it off and I flip the board over and it perfectly fits on there and it's got a lot of meat resting on the uh, cement which is exactly what you want. You won't, don't want to have the feeling like uh, they're sagging or bowing so as long as you uh, take advantage of the maximum length uh, that you can until the board starts to rise that's where you be begin uh, begin your taper cut down to the end then you'll have a lot of uh, you'll have a lot of wood on the ground which is what you want for a lot of support so I'm going to cut the one for the uh, other side and do a little more securing and uh, probably call it a day today <sighs> draw with the camera all right everybody day one of the uh, the uh, wheelchair ramp build is in the uh, record books and as you can see there we got the uh, stringers all laid out we got a very strong uh, ramp base built there. It's, uh, it's aesthetically very pleasing because it's uh, hidden. You really can't uh, see too much and it's not, a, uh, it's not a big trip hazard. And it went down, uh, I have to say it went down remarkably well. Took two trips to the uh, lumber dicks today, but it, uh, it paid off big time. Everything's all square and you know, you guys know, that that thing is level as can be in every friggin' spot. Just to be sure, before I uh, do the uh, top decking tomorrow, I get, will go around and shim a little bit where necessary to get things absolutely uh, perfect. So, there we go. Wheelchair ramp build, day one. All good to go. Tomorrow should be uh, wrapping it up, and all now all we have to do is get a uh, bottom plate a nice metal plate slip proof grip uh, grip plate for the bottom it'll make the transition nicely and we will be in business thanks for being along for uh, day two don't go anywhere more adventures ahead